Hallelujah. Praise him. Amen. If you didn't praise him, you missed a good opportunity to raise your hands in his presence. Amen. If you have your Bibles, look with us in Acts chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. I would title this, The Journey and the Destination. The Journey and the Destination. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. I pray that this touch you like it did me. Amen. This is a pretty awesome text. It's going to explain a lot of things this morning, the questions that you may have had or some questions that you have never asked. The journey and the destination. Amen. I know that our main goal is the destination heaven, but it, it, it's the journey, amen, that, that fills you with knowledge and wisdom and relationships to resources. It's like, it's like going to college. The destination is the diploma, but you get nothing from it. The knowledge don't come from the diploma. The relationships that you meet along the way don't come from the diploma. The destination is great. It's great to get there to cap the gown, turn another tassel. All that's great to be able to hang that piece of paper on the wall. That's wonderful. But, but all the knowledge, the relationships, the, the information that you retained, it was learned along the journey. Same thing with everything else in your life. It, it's the journey. And sometimes we get so caught up in the destination, heaven, that, that we fail to embrace and love the people along the journey. And, and we fail to retain the things that God wants us to learn, the information and the knowledge. But I just thank God for the journey. Amen. Amen. Everybody there? Amen. Acts 19, 1. Now it happened that while Apollos was away in Corinth, Paul made his way down through the mountains, came to Ephesus, and it happened on some disciples there. The first thing he said, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you take God into your mind only, or did you also embrace him into your heart? Now, some people's got God on their mind. He crosses their mind, and they think about him at different times in their life. But there's a difference in having God on your mind, in your mind, than in your heart. And the church said amen. Did he get inside you? God, this is an awesome church. We're, we've never even heard of that. A Holy Spirit question mark, God within us question mark. And he said... How were you baptized then, asked Paul, in John's baptism? That explains it, said Paul. John preached a baptism of radical life change so that people would be ready to receive the one coming after him who turned out to be Jesus. If you've been baptized in John's baptism, you're ready now for the real thing for Jesus. And when he says the real thing, he's not talking about Coca-Cola. He's talking about Jesus. Amen. Father, we love you. We praise you. We appreciate you, God. I thank you for the power of this word, the revelation of it, God. Thank you for wisdom and knowledge. Paul prays that give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, touch every mind, every spirit, every individual in here. God, they're here because they love you. God, they're here because they want a deeper relationship with you, God, to get in depth in your word. So touch them this morning. Bind everything against us. God, everybody in here has a, a personal enemy, entity, spirit, whatever it may be, God. That is, that is against them, that would try to destroy them. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you said that you come that we have life and life more abundantly. So, God, let your work go forth for power, clarity, authority, a prophetic age. God, let it, let it challenge us and change us. You love us the way we are, but you love us too much to stay that way. God, you're constantly trying to call us up to another place, a, a, a higher place in you. So we need you this morning. In Jesus' name, church, say amen. You may be seated. The journey and the destination. Amen. Sometimes we get so goal-driven and, and, and success-minded, if you will, that, that we fail to enjoy the journey. Some people are so busy finding success and being the best that they can be that they forget and fail to enjoy just everyday life. I want to back up to Acts chapter 18, verse 18. The Bible said that Paul stayed a while longer in Corinth. Now, Paul is on a journey to Rome. Paul is, is on the way to his deathbed, which was actually a stump. Paul was beheaded. He was led by some Roman soldiers to an old stump in the backyard, and he knelt down on his knees and laid his head on it, and, 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 and the first ISIS-style killing of it in John the Baptist was held at, at Paul's execution. 
So here we find he's on a journey. He knows his end. He knows his life. But he's still encouraged about God. And the Bible said he's on his way. And the Bible said, but then it was time to take leave of his friends saying his goodbye. Then it was time to take leave of his friends saying his goodbye. I, I want to talk to you about the people that you have to leave behind. I was thinking about this this morning. I get up at 5 o'clock and I start reading. I start praying. I start looking at the Word of God. And, and, and I read where it said that he had to take his leave of his friends saying his goodbye. And I thought about all the high school friends that I had. Amen. I had a lot of friends I was close with, best friends. We hung out. We hunted. We fished. We horsed around. We had some fun, and some of it wasn't all that fun, but we had a lot of time together. I don't have not. I don't have one contact in my phone from a friend I had in high school. It was just time to say goodbye to that. Amen. I promise it's the friends that you meet later on in life that will be there. It's your family that will be there with you. That's why you've got to be careful of not letting the enemy come in and cause family problems and relationships problems because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will start that by relationships. But there's some friends that you need to leave behind and say your goodbyes to. There's some people you need to sever your ties with because they're causing you problems. When you get married, the Bible said when a man finds a wife, he cleaves to her and she cleaves to him and they leave their family behind. That don't mean, amen, they never have anything to do with them, but that means that you are the man and woman over your house, and you run it like you want to. Mama don't control your house, but there's some things that you need to say goodbye to. Would somebody give God a shout of praise? And, and, and there's no wickedness or righteousness in this. There's no right or wrong. I'm not a very sociable person. I'm not a very social person. I like people at church. When I see you in town, I'll talk to you. But I'm not the kind of person just to show up and hang out with you. I'm not going to call you and ask you if you want to go shopping. You got your life. I got mine. Amen. And I, But I promise you, you'll be at the, the less friends you have, the better off you're going to be. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible said he said his goodbyes. Amen. Sometimes you got to look in the rear view and say goodbye to some things, some people, and some places to ever embrace where God wants you to go. The Bible said he sailed for Syria. The Bible goes on to say that he had to, he had his head shaved as part of a vow that he had taken. Now on this journey, amen, this particular time in his life, he shaved his head as a symbolism, as a Nazarite vow. And what that was was just separation from the world and symbolism symbolic of cleansing to get where God wants you you're going to have to say goodbye to some friends amen you, I know you're going to cry about it amen you may want to spend time with them but everybody can't go where God's trying to lead you give God praise anyway so he shaved his head. This was a Nazarite vow. Amen. It was symbolic of a separation from the world and a cleansing. If you're ever going to be what God wanted you to be and wants you to be, amen, you're going to have to separate yourself from some things, people, places, chemicals, substances, amen. You'll never be your best you hanging on to some things that you are indulging in. So to be what God wants you to be, you got to separate what it was. It was an outward sign that God is doing an inside work, amen. What does that mean? Sanctification is a process that separates you from things of the world. Alcohol, drugs, chemicals, pornography, whatever it may be, anything that's keeping you from being what God wants you to be and causing you to feel guilty because that guilty feeling is a good feeling. It's letting you know that God's not done with you yet because anything you can do that's not God's will that you get so comfortable in it that you don't feel bad about it, that's a dangerous place to be. If you do something wrong and feel guilty, that's the Spirit of God letting you know that's not right. Therefore, amen, God is still working with you. Give Him praise anyway. But when you continually override your conscience and do things that God don't want you to do to the point that you're not guilty anymore, that's a dangerous place. Because if you're not careful, amen, you may take it too far and go too far. The Bible talks about, I don't believe there's anybody in here in that place, that you'll be turned over to a reprobate mind, believe a lie, and be damned. Amen. You have met people that believe lies, and the Bible said they've turned over to a reprobate mind, and they are damned. That means, amen, they'll never be converted. They'll never be another spiritual conversion. They have went too far, and their fate is sealed. Give God praise that you're not one of them. So now he's taken a vow, he shaved his head, 
just to show the world that, that he's separating himself from the world. Amen. He's on a journey, and, and his final destination is to be beheaded to be a martyr for Christ. To be a martyr for Christ. Oh, this is good stuff. Amen. Let's go a little further. I can't get bogged up there. i got to go on, but I would love to say some things, but I need to go on. They landed in Ephesus where Priscilla and Aquila got off and stayed. The Bible said Paul left the ship briefly to go to the meeting place and preach to the Jews. They wanted him to stay longer, but he couldn't. They wanted him to stay longer, but he couldn't. I, I, I'm going to preach it till you get it. They wanted him to stay longer, but he couldn't. What does that mean? They wanted him to stay longer. You don't get your way all the time. I come to bust your spiritual bubble. Amen. Mama may have gave you everything. Amen. But you don't have your way with everything. God never gives anybody everything they want. Amen. They wanted him to stay, but he didn't. Amen. Life don't always hand you everything you want. You got to be big enough in God to understand that you're going to praise God with it or without it. You got to get to the place in your life that you're going to love God with the blessings or without it. You got to get to the place in God that you say, God, if I have to bury somebody I love more than anything on I'm going to praise you anyway. God, if this comes to an end, I'm going to love you anyway. I love you, God, because of who you are, not because of what you give me. That's the place you get to that nothing, no enemy, no entity, no spirit, no demon, no principality, no peril, nothing can hinder you. When you get to the place that you don't care that you're going to praise God anyway, I promise you, you'll change mentally and it'll take you to a place that you'll be encouraged. You got to get to the place, amen, that you understand life's just life. Amen. Bad things happen to good people. Bad people get good breaks. Amen. There's not always an enemy or a demon behind every destruction. Sometimes it just happens. But if you'll praise your God through it. Man, this is awesome. They wanted him to stay, but the Bible said he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. He, he told him no. Amen. It's what you, you have got to understand and learn to say no. They wanted him to stay. It looks like old Paul being a preacher and an apostle, little old church folks, amen, little blue-haired ladies, amen, wanting him to stay. It looks like he could have. Amen. He wasn't really in a hurry. He didn't have, a, a, amen, a personal agenda like where he had to be at a certain time. Amen. God wanted him at Rome in a season. It looks like he would have been able to stay, but Paul said, no, I can't. You have got to learn to say no. Some of you have no peace because you can't say no. You say yes to everything because you think being tied to God makes you a doormat and a slave to somebody. Amen. You have got to learn to say no. You got to learn to say no. Some of you have no peace because you can't say no. Every time somebody asks you to do something, you show up thinking you Savior. Therefore, amen, you have no peace because you don't know how to say no. You've got to learn to say no. I have people ask me stuff all the time and I point blank say no. No. Not going to do it. Hey, I'm moving next Saturday. No. You know, but, but, but because it's so far down the road, they ask you, you got a good heart, amen, and, and, and you want to be everything to everybody, you just say, yeah. You know, they'll come to you and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm moving, you know, couch, bed, whole house a, a month from now. Can you help? Oh, yeah, man, I'll be there. But about two weeks from then, you're thinking, man, I made that promise. And then all of a sudden, a week from there, you're like, man, Saturday's coming. And then the night before, you got no peace, and you're trying to come up, you're sick. You know, I, it's best to tell people, hey, let me pray about it. Let me think about it. Learn to say, look at your neighbor and say, learn to say no. But after saying goodbye, he promised, I'll be back, God willing. Word for word, message version. He, he, the Bible said he promised, saying, I'll be back, God willing. Let me tell you something. The Bible said don't make a promise. Uh, on, on yourself because you can't turn one hair. Now, now, I didn't say Paul did everything right even in the Word. He promised I'll be back, but he capped it with God willing. He, oh, this is good stuff. The Bible said don't make a promise on yourself because you can't turn one hair white or black. Amen. Just let your yes be yes, your no be no. Don't swear on anything because that leads to more sin. I've heard people swear on all kind of things. I, I swear on my children's life. I swear on my mama's grave. I swear on this. And the Bible said that is sin. Let your yes be yes, your no be. Most people that swear and promise, they do that trying to convince you because amen they are, they're naturally liars oh God this is good stuff anytime somebody starts a story out by saying hey this ain't a lie why do you have to validate that why are you trying to convince them that it's the truth 
Let your yes, this, this is better than y'all shouting, man. This is, hey, man, if the ushers have come, we're going to take up another offering. Let your yes be yes, your no be no, but we try to validate things because we naturally, amen, that's how, that's how we are. Hey, this is, we start stories off, hey, man, this is God's honest truth. Hey, I'm not lying. You know, hey, believe me, this, we, we say all that because folks don't believe you. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. He promised. You wouldn't believe the promises that we make that we can't. The Bible said it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break a vow. Don't even go there. Don't make promises you're not going to keep. You wouldn't believe the people that you wouldn't believe the promises I the promises I made to my children that I couldn't keep. And what it does, it builds distrust. It makes people think, hey, if I can't if I can't trust my daddy to keep a promise, well, well then that's when the Bible said God's ways are not our ways and God's thoughts not our thoughts. So therefore, the people that's closest to us break promises. Therefore, amen, we initially, the enemy gets in and says nobody keeps promises. You can't even trust God. The devil is a lie. That's why the Bible said God will stick closer than a brother. You can trust him. Give God praise. So here... Amen. He said, I'll be back, God willing. The Bible says don't make promises, but say God willing. Don't say what you're going to do next week because you don't even know if you're going to be here next week. Say, if God wills. Look at your neighbor and say, if God's willing. Man, this is awesome. He goes on to say, amen, after spending a considerable time in Antioch with the Christians, Paul set off again for Galatia and Pyrrha, and the Bible said retracting his old tracks one town after another, putting fresh heart into the disciples. Now what he's doing, he's going from church to church, the churches that he had started, the ones he had built, he's going back evangelizing to them. On his way to a chopping block to be beheaded, he's going around to the churches he built, and he, he, he's having revival services. Amen. He's an evangelist now, and he's teaching and preaching, encouraging, but I want to leave you with this statement. He says putting fresh Fresh heart into the disciples. Putting fresh heart into the disciples. There's a saying that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the heart in the dog. That's good stuff. Putting fresh heart into the disciples. Putting fresh heart. That's what church is. You hear, amen, for God to put fresh heart in you. Amen. I, I, know, I know how weak he is. You work, amen, everything it takes to make life happen. And you have problems with house and spouse and kids. And you got all drama and trouble, everything going on. You got supervisors you can't stand and don't like to work with. Amen. You got in-laws and outlaws and mother-in-laws and all that nonsense that you got to deal with. And the church said, glory to God. Well, you got all, and, and you get weak throughout the week. And all of a sudden, you need church to come get fresh heart. That's that's why we praise God like we praise him because I need some heart to make it to Wednesday. I need some heart to make it through everything that tomorrow may hand me. That's the purpose of church, to put fresh heart in you. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible said a man named Apollos came to Ephesus. He was a Jew born in Alexandria, Egypt. The Bible said he was a terrific speaker, eloquent and powerful in his preaching of the scriptures. He was well educated in the way of the master and fiery in his enthusiasm. And he was fiery in his enthusiasm. That's why the Bible wants us to be excited about God. Come to church expecting. Don't just come, amen, like this is a rerun of religion that this Sunday is going to be like last Sunday. I need a new miracle today aside from what I needed last time. You may have a child, amen, that's sick. You may have a spouse that's on the verge of leaving you. You may have a bank account on the verge of zeros. I don't know what you need, but I know a God that has the, if you're excited about God if you will come with fiery enthusiasm and be and be excited about God I promise you God will work a miracle in your life amen nobody is any happier than when a child is excited to see you it's kind of like when you worked all day and you drive home and you got a couple kids waiting to see you amen that does something to you it lets you know you'll work amen it, it was worth it so how do you think God feels when you show up to his house and give him a crazy praise when you show up and say God I'm glad to to be in your house. I love you, Lord. Same principle. And the Bible said he had fiery enthusiasm. The Bible said Apollos was accurate in everything he taught about Jesus up to a point. This is the interest church. God, this is awesome, man. Get a message version of the Bible if you don't have. I love the KJV. 
Amen. I, I, my memory verses and memory bank that I have stored up, the, the word that's, that's, that's written on the tablet of my heart that I might not sin against God. I, I memorize it in, in, in the KJV, but I like this version better. And it says he was a terrific speaker. He was eloquent. He was powerful in his preaching. He was well educated in the way of Jesus. Amen. And he was, he, he was accurate about Jesus up to a point. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to be, it's good to be accurate about Jesus, but the thing that scared me here, he's accurate up to a point. There are some people that can help you up to a point. There are some places the reason you left them in the past is because you outgrew where you was at and, and, and you got as far, as far as you could go at that level, that point of your life. But this is dangerous. It says he was accurate about everything he taught about Jesus up to a point, but he only went as far as the baptism of John. This is good stuff. This is why you're Pentecostal. Not that you're better than anybody else. Not that you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues to get to heaven. You don't. You can simply be saved and go to heaven. But there's more. He was accurate about everything he taught about Jesus up to a point. And, 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 and I'm reading word for word. But he only went as far as the baptism of John. He preached with power in the meeting place. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and told him the rest of the story. God, it's awesome, man. That, that, there's more to the story than just John's baptism. This is where Pentecostals differ from Church of Christ, the Methodists, and the Baptists. There's, and we're not better than they are. We just believe differently than they believe. This is good stuff. This, 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 this is awesome. Because, amen, they believe all this up to a point. And here he says, amen, I want to read it one more time. He was well educated in the way of the master, fiery in enthusiasm. He was accurate in everything up to a point, and he went only as far as John's baptism. And the Baptist people, they believe this up to John's baptism. They don't preach any further than that. Methodist, Church of Christ, amen, everybody has their own little doctrinal views and, and, and their, own, their own ways they see things, but we're, we're Pentecostal. There's no such thing as Baptocostal. There's charismatic movements that have a whole lot of praise, but they don't believe in the movement of the Holy Spirit with the nine spiritual gifts that Corinthians talks about. And the church said, glory to God. I'm going to explain it as we go. And the Bible said they took him aside and told him the rest of the story. Amen. They, 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 there's more to the story than John's baptism. I thank God that he saved me. I thank God that he gave me the time to be baptized in water. But there's more to the story than that. There's power to be had. Give God praise anyway. The Bible said in verse 27, when Apollos decided to go on to Achaia, the, the, the province of Achaia, his Ephesians friend gave their blessing and wrote a letter of recommendation. Gave a blessing and wrote a letter of recommendation. A lot of pastors won't tell you this. All they tell you is, oh, just come to church with me. A lot of pastors won't tell you this. They'll just say, oh, just come to our church. Everything's going to be all fine. You can't just leave a church. You can't just get mad at a church and leave and never explain anything to them. I got a daughter that just recently relocated churches it was time I've been praying about it for two years it was just time for them to leave and I said you know there's a right way to leave you can't just leave you know you can't just get tired of a wife or a husband and just leave them and go marry somebody else there's a process the Bible talks about a writ of divorcement you have to divorce them and get legally separated and even with church, there, there's a way to leave church. You know, if, if you out there and you feel like God's moving you, you don't just go to another. The Bible calls that bastards. And the problem in church is we've got a whole lot of bastards sitting somewhere going nowhere. Give God praise anyway. <clears throat> so the right way to leave is you come up and you tell me, hey, I really feel like God's relocating us. Will you pray over us and give us your blessings? And what you do, you simply come down. We anoint you with oil. We release you. Then you go and be blessed. But the reason a whole lot of people aren't blessed where they are is because they still married to the church they come from. God, it's good stuff, man. It's awesome. And the church said, glory to God. So they gave a blessing and wrote a letter of recommendation. And the Bible said that, that, that the welcome paid off. Apollos turned into great help. And, and, and came through for the believers. And the Bible said he was particularly effective in public debate. He was particularly effective in public debate. I want to talk to you for a moment uh, about, about public debates. I, 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 I used to debate a lot of scripture. I used to try to convert and convince everybody that our way was right. I quit all that. 
and, and I got a whole lot more peace, amen, uh, about it. But public debate, once you get to the place, amen, that you know what you are and who you are, and you're not going to let anybody else, amen, discourage you, give God praise anyway. You as an individual have got to get to the place that you're not afraid of social shaming, that you ain't afraid about what Facebook's going to say, that you ain't afraid about what Twitter somebody's going to post, amen. I got to the place, amen, that I know who I am, what I am, and I know whose I am, and I'm not, make, I'm not making excuses about it. I'm not, I'm not apologizing for it anymore. I'm going to preach the way he called me to preach. I'm going to say what he called me to say. I was watching Fox News this morning. They had Kid Rock on there. Tucker Carlson done an interview with Kid Rock. Tucker Carlson said, hey, man, I, I just don't understand how cancel culture hadn't affected you. He said, I'm uncancelable. He said, they cannot cancel me. He said, because I really don't care what they think about me. A amen. And, and that's a good attitude to have because you got so many Christians, you got so many closet Christians that believe this, but they're just scared to publicly announce it because of all the backlash. But baby, I ain't ashamed of God. I'm not ashamed of being Pentecostal. I am who I am. This is good stuff. He was powerful in public debate. He was not afraid. He didn't have a jelly bag. There are so many preachers, amen, that they had the opportunity to really help people. But they get up there, amen, and, 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 and they politically correct. They, they think they got to dot every I, cross every T. They think if they say something wrong, they're going to be a racist, amen. If they say something else wrong, they're going to be a homophobic, amen. They're going to be hated. They're going, I don't care what they think about me. I'm going to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Awesome. And the Bible said, as he brought out proof, convincing proof from the scriptures, look at your neighbor and say, I'm living proof. I'm living proof that God can take a nobody from a nowhere place and, and bless him. I'm living proof, amen, that God can deliver you from addictions. I was a case of day alcoholic. I loved it, amen. I, I hear people all the time talking about, man, I, you know, how they dreaded sin. How old, man, my old days about killed me. I had fun. I'd be lying to you, but, man, I, I had a whole lot of fun. I wasn't really wanting to quit it when I quit it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I hear them people talk about, oh, man, how bad it was. It wasn't that bad to me. I really did enjoy a whole lot of that. You know, you know what? The Bible said there, there's, there's fun in sin for a season. I had a whole lot of fun, and God really had to pressure me to quit some of that stuff. But you, hear, you see them people, oh, man, they was miserable in the world, and now they miserable in church. I'm like, man, what in the world? You know, if you, if you was miserable bellied up to a Budweiser and a bar stool, and now you're miserable bellied up to the altar and some anointing oil, what, what gives, man? You got to find a, a place in your life that you realize, hey, man, my happiness is an inside job. Give God praise anyway. Now, I said all that to say this. I wanted to get to, to Acts chapter 19. The Bible said, now it happened while Paulus is on the way to Corinth. Paul is still on the journey on his way to Rome. The Bible said, amen, I'm going to read it. Paul made his way down through the mountains, came to Ephesus, and it happened, he happened on some disciples there. And the first thing he said is, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? Were you baptized with the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost, with the evidence speaking in tongues? When you believe. That means after you saved, did you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Get this. Did you take God into your mind only or did you embrace him with your heart? Did he get on the inside? And like I said in my introduction, a whole lot of people have God on their mind. Amen. They have God thoughts. They have God people in their life. And anytime there's a dilemma, they think about God. Oh, I need to go to church. Amen. Anytime there's a there's disruptance or, or turbulence in the house, they, they have God thoughts and they'll come to church for a few times and then everything will get better. That's the way God works. But when things get better, they tend to get lax in Zion, so to speak. They start missing service again. Then all, he said, did you take God into mind or, or did you let him get in your heart? When I got saved, in 2003, amen, he wasn't only on my mind, he got down in my heart. The reason, amen, you're here this morning is because he's not only a thought on your head, but he's love in your heart. Give God praise that he touched your heart. The reason some of you didn't commit suicide is because God wasn't just a thought on your mind. He was something in your heart. The reason some of you hadn't backslid and got tangled up again with the yoke of bondage in which you was used to be tied up in is because God has touched your heart. 
Amen. Some of you ain't perfect. I'm not either. There's nobody perfect in this place. But the reason you, ain't, you, you, you aren't all full in sin again is because God won't let you go. He touched your heart. There's a difference in having something on your mind than in your heart. If it's on your mind, you can be distracted from it. A lot of you have things on your mind. Amen. Personal memos up there that you're going to do, things you're going to get on the way home, groceries you need to pick up, but all of a sudden something else comes through or something else happens, and it takes your mind off of that, and you get home, and you're like, man, I forgot that because it was in your mind. But if it's in your heart, amen, it's going to stay there. The first thing Paul did says, if you receive the Holy Ghost since you believe, and listen to me. Like I said, you know, God has gave us wisdom. You do not have to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost to go to heaven. You don't have to speak in tongues to go to heaven. But the Bible said when the Spirit of God comes on you and you're baptized, you receive power from on high. And I really believe in the last days, amen, to, the, to experience the level of peace that you need in war times, to experience the level of peace that you need without being d d discouraged and, and, and disrupted to the point that it takes your, that it takes your peace and, and, and the way you live now that you really need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not to get to heaven. But amen, just to have power and to be able to overcome the things that's going to, that, that there's demons being released from the pits of hell. Amen, that, that there's, there's major lust spirits and perverse spirits and, 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 and rage and anger. There's all kind of things in sight and all kind of things on earth. Amen, the, the, America is a powder keg. Uh, of race relations, we're on the verge of, of a racial civil war. We're, we're on the verge of a religious war. You got Muslims against Christians, and, and, and you, now you got other countries' wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in divers places. There's so much going wrong, and so much going on on every level that we really need to be as close to God as we can. Can 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 you be a witness and give God some praise to what I'm saying? Did He get inside you? We've never even heard of that. A Holy Spirit, God within us. Now Paul says, how were you baptized then? They said in John's baptism. That means they were saved. They believed Jesus was the Lord. They walked to John. They was water baptized. And this is where the Baptists, the Church of Christ, and I'm not knocking none of them, man. I, I got Baptist friends, amen, that I love, Baptist family members. Amen, we get together, do devotions during hunting season. Nothing wrong with that. Amen, they, 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 they go into heaven. You know, you know but, but, but there's more. There, there's more. There, there's more. They were saved. They were baptized in water, but they was more. That's where the Baptist, the Church of Christ, and, and the Methodist movement stopped, simply with salvation and, and water baptism. Now, now, the problem is with, 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 with the no, denominations and the way I preach and the way they preach, the Baptist, Church of Christ, and the Methodists say, I'm just point blank wrong, man. You're wrong. Uh, you know, but I don't say they're wrong. I, I just say that there's more to it than how you're preaching and how you're living. And the church said, glory to God. But, but, but this, this here cancel, cancels out everything they say that's wrong because I'm reading you scripture, and everybody would say, well, oh, that, 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 that was the... Paul was not even one of the 12 disciples. Paul never saw Jesus Christ with, with, with his eyes. He met him on the Damascus Road in spirit because Jesus is already dead. So Paul is living and doing this during our era and our age. It's good stuff. John preached a baptism. He goes on to say John preached a baptism of radical life change. John preached a baptism of radical life change. Meaning when you get saved, when you give your heart to God, amen, you'll want to be baptized in water. And when you're baptized in water, that, that is an outward show of, of an inside work that God's doing. It, it's, it's the outside validation that God's changing your life. It, but a, he, he said radical life change. My, I, my life took a radical life change. I walked, I walked out of Lowndes County Jail, B4 dorm, in 2003, got saved, water baptized, and my life took a radical change. I quit cussing. I quit drinking. I quit listening to secular music. Amen. I, I, I quit a whole lot of stuff. I took the rebel flag off the front of my truck. A, a whole, it, it, my life took a radical change. But the problem with a lot of people is they come to God, they go to church, they got God on their mind, but he never gets in their heart, and they never have a life change. Give God praise anyway. My, my, my reading material changed. When I got saved, the things I read, the things I looked at changed. It quit from being secular perversion to this, whatever it may be. You have got to have a radical life change to validate that you belong to God. Give him praise this morning. He said, he said this. He said, a radical life change so that people, so that the people would be ready to receive the one coming after him. If you've been baptized in John's baptism, you're ready now for the real thing. 
You're re- if you've been baptized in John, if you've been saved, ask God in your heart, you believe he's Lord and Master. Paul says simply believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you're saved. You know, you know, we, you know we want to make it so hard. People think that they've got to say the Romans road to salvation. And if they say something wrong, the thief on the cross simply said, Lord, remember me. There's no right words to say. It's a heart thing. God knows if you want to be saved, and he'll save you. You ain't even got to talk to be saved. Get some good stuff, man. What, if you got to talk to be saved, what about, what, what, what about the mutes? Listen, man, it's a heart thing. But people make it so religious. It's good stuff. He goes on to say, if, if, you've, been, if you've been saved and been baptized, well, now, now you're ready for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the real thing, the real thing. And, and, and I couldn't mention the word real thing without talking about Coke. Coke had a slogan, the real thing. I don't drink Coke. Coke got woke. Coke, Coke got woke. Coke got woke. They, they got so woke, you know, you know the, the, the Democrat left-wing extremist idiots, they got woke. This is the first pair of blue jeans that I've ever worn in my life that wasn't Levi's. Finally pe- found some Wranglers that fit me. I'll never buy another pair of Levi's. They got, they, they got woke. I got no time for woke people. I got no time for politically correct cancel culture folks that believe in abortion, same-sex marriage, open borders, taking away the guns. I got no time for that. And, 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 you, and, and, I, know, and I know these Democrats that might look at me and say, well, my little dime don't, don't support Coke. No, it don't, but it sure ain't going to help it. And, and when I added up the amount of dollars that I would spend on blue jeans, Levi's throughout my life, would add up to a little more than $50,000. So I'll just keep my 50000 and give it to Wrangler, somebody with some sense. Give God praise anyway. <clears throat> your vote matters. Your vote's your voice, and your money matters. There's a, there's a thing called mammoth.org that's set up for Republicans and Christians to spend their money. Look at it. Amen. Quit, quit supporting people that's trying to destroy this country. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible says, amen, now you're ready for the real thing, and it's Jesus, not Coca-Cola. As soon as they heard of it, the Bible said they were baptized in the name of Jesus, the Master. Paul put his hands on their heads, and the Holy Spirit entered them. From that moment on, they were praising God in tongues. Praising God in tongues. They were saved. They was water baptized, and now they baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Give God praise. And talking about God's actions, now God's not just a a thought on their mind. He is a living entity being in their heart. He's God with us. You can be baptized with God with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But so many people, amen, get so caught up, hung up, distracted by tongues. It's simply a, a prayer language that the devil cannot understand. Sometimes you walk in your prayer chamber and you kneel down and you pray. And some people, amen, because they're so carnal, mind they don't think God amen can hear silent prayers but God hears silent prayers there's some prayers you don't need to vocally speak anyway because the devil don't know a lot of what's going on until you speak it and once you speak it he's able to attack it so so there's they, they things they things that I don't pray about my children in English. Amen. There's things that I think my children's going through and things, amen, that I sense and feel. And I won't speak it in my prayer chamber because although God is there, the Bible said, Paul said, though I go to do good, evil's all around. Amen. So not only is God in my prayer chamber, the devil's there also. And when you speak something, now I know, I, I know, I know you know them holy people that's so holy. That, that the devil can't even stay around them. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they snow amazing grace and, and, and they sweat frankincense and myrrh and, and the devil can't touch them. Man, don't, don't get caught up in that nonsense. Paul said, though I go to do good, evil's all around. But tongues is a prayer language. It's, it's a spiritual prayer language that the devil cannot understand. Angels can't even interpret it. Tongues is a prayer language, a perfect prayer to your Father. It's your spirit praying, not your mind. When I pray in English, I pray, I, I pray what I want. I pray my will. If I'm praying in English, I, sometimes the Bible said we pray amiss. What that means is if I'm praying for one of my children, uh, you know, I'll pray what I think they need, what I want them to do, and that could be amiss. It could be wrong. It could be that might not be God's will. I may pray for them to have a career change and it be a lot of money, but it might not be what God wants for them. So it's best to pray in tongues. That's my spirit asking God to do the right thing, not my... God, it's awesome, man. So here, they, they, they was baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. 
and they was talking about God's actions. And the Bible said in verse 8, Paul then went straight to the meeting place. He had, he had run to the place for three months. He had run of the place for three months. Listen to me. Take advantage of things when you have run of the place. Take, take, take advantage. Take that time to learn about God, to be built up. God, God will give you a season of grace that you have run of certain places. God is awesome, man. This is the difference. Amen. Power either goes to your head or your heart. Paul had run of the place. That, that don't mean he could beat his chest like Tarzan and say, look what I'm doing, amen. That's pride. P power either goes to your head or your heart. When power goes to your head, I promise God will let life snatch the rug out from under you. But if power goes to your heart, God will exalt you. Give him praise this morning. The Bible said he had run of the place for three months, but that don't mean he got to run it like he wants to. This ain't my church. This ain't my family's church. This ain't Teresa's church. This is God's church. I can't run this place like I... I can't run this place like I want to. I got to run it like God wants it run. That's why I'm serious about stuff. That's why you don't see children running around playing on the altar. That's why you don't see nonsense. This ain't romper room. This ain't your living room. Hey, this ain't my living room. This is God's house. Give him praise anyway. You know, I, I'm not knocking them, but when Evans Memorial Camp came, you know, and they had their children up here doing things, and a little boy broke and run and come up here, I get it. Amen. I mean, you can't stop them. Amen, but it wasn't funny to me. I just let him continue and go on and disrupt the whole little services the girl was doing. Man, listen to me. This is God's stuff. This ain't playtime. I love you children, and I know you do too, but this ain't children's show-off hour. It's God's house. And the church said, glory to God. I knew a woman, she'd get up and preach with a baby on her hip. And everybody's like, oh, ain't that precious. No, that, that, that's silly. That's nonsense. That, 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 that's idiocy. There's a time for everything. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes there's a place and time for everything. This is church time. Give God praise anyway. Hell's hot, eternity's long, and I'm serious about it. Now, I cut up and play. I cut up and joke. People tell me outside of church that I play too much. It may be because I'm so serious about this. It's awesome, man. That's why, that, that, that's why you don't see a lot of musicians up here. Because a lot of musicians are crazy. They think they deserve special favor. And re that they want to show up late and, play and tune their guitars during church. Man, that, 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 that's nonsense to me, man. You know, you know, this is God's stuff. Be ready when you get here. Don't, don't be late. If I got a preacher coming, he's late. He don't preach. He says, now, I, I had one of the greatest prophets that has ever preached show up two minutes late. He said, hey, listen to me preach. I'm serious about this. I ain't playing games. I ain't joking. I, I, I'm not controlled by your ties. I'm serious about this. He, sh he showed up and said, sorry, I'm late. I said, me too, man. I got a good message. You're going to get to hear it. He thought I was playing. I said, no, Jack, you sit right there. And when you show up on time, you can preach. This is God's stuff. You, you, are you too important that God's going to wait on you? No, we don't do that here. We punctual. It may last till 9 o'clock tonight, but we was here on time. God, it's good stuff. Give God praise anyway. The Bible said Daniel did what he did for God with a spirit of excellency. That's why God blessed him, because everything he done for God, he done it to the best of his ability. Now, God, I may skimp at work, and I may cut corners. Amen, that's close enough for government work, whatever. But this is God's stuff. And if you handle God's stuff, amen, with excellence, I promise you God is going to bless you. Give God praise anyway. I'll tell you another little thing that got me. Can I give a little commercial before I wind this up? This is just some things that's dear to my heart. There was a person that died, and, and I was asked to do the funeral. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. And they died on Monday. So I'm thinking, you know, they died on Monday. If you die, please die. Uh, don't, don't be buried on Saturday. Amen. <laughs> just please let your funeral be any day than Saturday. Because this was during hunting season. The person died on Monday. This is real stuff, church. And I know it's kind of funny, but the person died on Monday. So I, I, thought, I, thought that, I thought they'd planned the funeral on Tuesday, had the view on Wednesday, the funeral Thursday. That's the way that, but listen to me, COVID has caused so many people to be disrespected and dishonored. COVID come, there's not even funerals anymore. You know, not even funerals, and then the funeral home got into it because it's less work for them, and then just, you know, show up at grace. When somebody in my family dies, I don't care how bad COVID is, somebody in my family dies, we're going to have a traditional funeral, and we're going to honor them, give God praise anyway. 
So, you know, they died on Monday. I thought, you know, it'd be average process and we'd bury them on, on Thursday. But they called me and said, hey, the funeral's going to be on Saturday. I'm like, yeah, man. That's, uh, and, 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 you know, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, I, and, and I asked them, I said, look, they, they died Monday. You, you, you go pick out the casket and plant everything Tuesday. View them Wednesday, funeral Thursday. Well, they, they some family that, that, that's got good jobs and they don't want to take off work during the week. So they want to bury him on Saturday. I said, you mean to tell me they don't love this person enough to miss eight hours of work, but I'm supposed to miss my Saturday hunting season? It's their family member, not mine. But they can't miss eight hours of work, but expect me. You, you see how people think. Give God praise anyway. So I prayed. So hey, listen to me. Y'all good, good on y'all dying. Y'all ain't going to be buried on a Saturday. <laughs> it's good stuff. And, and I, I got to find a good place. Say, man, if you'll find a worship song, just give me a moment. The Bible said he had run in the place three months. This is why, this is why you got to take the time when you got run, when you got favor at work, when you got favor with people, take that time to learn about God, amen, to read your, some of you have, have run the place at work, take that time to read your Bible on breaks, get the word of God in you, watch what happens to Paul, all of a sudden the Bible said he has run the place for three months, and then the Bible says, doing his best to make things for the kingdom of God real and convincing to people, amen, but then resistance began to form as some of them began spreading evil rumors throughout the congregation about the Christian way of life. So Paul left. He had run at a place three months. Amen. Anytime you got favorite work that you got time, spend that time reading God's word. Have a Bible in your truck. When you stop at a train track, get a scripture in your spirit. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible says, then resistance began to form. God is so awesome. You need resistance. A rubber band isn't even effective in the way it was created without resistance. The whole purpose of a rubber band is to put it under pressure, then it works. Weights. Muscle cannot build without resistance. You have got to have spiritual resistance. Jesus would have never went to the cross without Judas. David would have never had the crown without a Goliath. If you don't have resistance, Paul had run the place. All of a sudden now he's laying hands on people and they're being baptized with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. That's why the Bible said God told him he had a thorn in his flesh. He begged God three times, God, take this thing for me. It hurts. God, it causes me to think things I shouldn't think. And God said, my grace is to sufficient because if you didn't have something to fight with you think you was celestial if you didn't have something to war with you think you was perfect but thank God for the struggle give God praise anyway I thank God for the struggle struggle is not sin struggle is something that, that, that you have to resist alcoholism is not a disease Dr drug addiction is not a disease I have sat in so many AA and NA meetings. I, I, I don't agree with Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't agree with Narcotics Anonymous. I don't believe you have to take 12 steps. I don't even believe you got to take a step at all. All you got to do is kneel down and say, God, help me. But they say uh, alcoholism is a disease. Cancer is a disease. Cancer is a disease. Hepatitis is a disease. You know, you know you, uh, flu, all, all those things. Is Alcoholism is a choice. Drug addiction ain't a disease. You know, we, we give people crutches and excuses. Oh, once an alcoholic, always not. The devil is a lie. Once an addict, the devil is a lie. Yeah, cancer's a disease. I, I, I get it and don't even know it and can't control it. I know people, amen, that ate clean their whole life, nutritionless. Amen, people that work out and run marathons, they get a cancer, they can't help it. That's a disease. Alcoholism is a choice. It, it, it's my choice. It can sit right there. That could be that could be a draft beer right there, man. That that ain't no disease. It can't affect me. It can't intoxicate me. It can't give me a DU. It's a choice. Either I pick it up or I don't. Bob. It's choice. The Bible said God put before us life and death. Choose. Amen. The Old Testament prophet said, if God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. It's your choice. How you live is your choice. The vehicle you go get into, amen, it's a choice you made and how you want to work. Some people didn't want to go to school. They went straight to work. It was a choice. It's not everybody's fault. Choice. This, it's a choice. I, 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 I can pick it up or, or, or I can resist it. 
but because we raised a weak generation and we made excuses for everything. Oh, it's a disease. It's not your fault, baby. The devil is a lie. We need to raise some people with some spiritual wisdom and common sense and let them know life don't always give you everything. You don't need something to cope with everything. Seriously, man, I know people, and it really wasn't all their fault because they had a parent, a grandparent, a caregiver giving them something. There's people that take pills to wake up. There's people that take pills to keep going. There's people that take pills to go to bed. Amen. They drink a monster drink on the way to work. They take a five-hour energy at 2 o'clock. Then they need something all day. You don't need nothing. Amen. Good food will take you through and prayer. Give God praise anyway. Smash my hand at work, a piece of 20-foot steel, one half inch thick, six inches wide, fell on my hand, slapped on it on a roller bed. And you, let me tell you something. It's amazing how quick that can travel to your brain. I immediately got hot and began to sweat and thought I was going to puke, walked to the office. She said, go get an x-ray, this bro x-ray is broke. I went down to the little farm clinic, got an x-ray. He said, no, it's not broke. I said, thank God. He said, stop at the front desk. I'm going to give you 25 lower tabs. I said, I don't want them. He said, I'm going to give them to you anyway. You might need one tonight. I said, at that time, I was 35 years old. I said, man, I'm 35 years old. Never took a pain pill. I'm not on any kind of medicine. I don't want it. He said, I'm going to give it to you anyway. I said, I don't want it. I went out there, had to sign some discharge papers. She handed me, she handed me the prescription. I said, I don't want this. She said, you got to take it anyway. I had to take it anyway because he, he got money based on how many pills he pump out. And they just push it on people. They, they, bigger, they bigger dope dealers than, than the man in the crack house. 35 years old, he knew it wasn't broke. I told him I didn't want it, but he pushed it on me. I don't want it. I wouldn't know a lower tab if you, if you hit me in the head with one with a slingshot. Don't want one. 77 years old, need double knee replacement surgery and won't even take a Tylenol. You can take a little bit of pain. Give God praise anyway. He goes on to say, Amen. Here they, they begin spreading evil rumors through the congregation about the Christian way of life. So Paul left. God, I'm going to close here. I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere near done. I wanted to preach on down. Amen. To where, to where all of a sudden, I, I'm going to get there real quick. Paul, Paul left. Paul left. You have got to pray and get discernment about who to fight and when. It looks like he'd have just stood his ground. They, they causing church trouble. But, but you need discernment on when to pull the sword and, and, and when to turn the other cheek. Paul, Paul left. God, this is so good, church. Paul left. You, got, you don't fight everything. You don't fight everybody. Every fight isn't. Sometimes, sometimes re resistance is your indicator and, and word from God, time to leave. Please get this. Some of you at work and work, and, and work is so stressful, well, it's time to leave. You know, an eagle, when it builds a nest, the eagle will go out and get skins, and an eagle will lay skins down, and it'll go out and get roadkill. It'll lay roadkill down. It'll, it'll, it'll go find an old cloth, a croaker sack, and it'll lay it down and skins, but it's built on stickers. Stickers, what holds it together? Stickers, bamboos, briars. Well, it, 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 it hatches eggs. The little eaglets will, will, will come out, and, and when they get too big for the nest, every time the eagle leaves to get food, that eagle will take a skin, take a skin. T t take a garment, take a croaker sack, t take straw. Well, well, then what it does, the little eagles begin to feel the stickers. Well, then it makes it so uncomfortable, they jump out. It, it, that's how they learn to fly. And some of you at a, at a job you despise, it ain't for you to keep fighting it, stay, convert them, change them, show them your way. It's for you to find something else to do. Give God praise anyway. So Paul left. And the Bible said they were seven sons of a priest. They show up, amen, and, and, and what they do, the Bible said they saw, they thought it was Paul's game, and, and they want to cast a demon out of a man. And the Bible said the man said, Jesus we know and we've heard of Paul, but who are you? And then that Bible said that demon-possessed man went berserk. And the Bible says, amen, amen, that when he went berserk, he beat the men up and, and, and he tore their clothes off. And the Bible said, amen, they left naked and a shame. And the Bible says, amen, here that curiosity about Paul had opened up in the reverence for Master Jesus. Many of those who believed came out of the closet. God, this is awesome, man. Many of those that believed came out of the closet. Do y'all have anything you need to bring out of the closet? <laughs> glory, glory, this is good stuff, church. Amen. And the Bible said, amen, they made a clean break. And here, sorcerers, witches, warlocks, 
come out of the woodwork, brought their spell books, their incantations, and burn them, and it was $50,000 worth of stuff. All of a sudden, here, that because they had no power, they were going through the motions. They, they prayed for a demon-possessed man. They had no power. They wasn't even saved. And the Bible said the man beat them up. You can't fight the things you need to fight without God. You can't overcome alcoholism and drug addiction and pervert and all that stuff. You've got to have God. Give God praise. And the Bible said, the witches, please do not get tied up in witchcraft. Please do not consult a psychic. Hey, that, that stuff's real. They bought their spell books. I bought a spell book in Jasper, Florida to burn it. I bought it to keep it, but God didn't give me peace about it because I wanted to place in my life spiritually, amen, that I needed to read it. So I burned it. We tried to burn it. It wouldn't burn. Then the horses was running crazy while it was burning on the stump. The dogs was barking. Dalton's sitting there. He remembers it. He wasn't but about that high. He said, Daddy, what's going on? I said, there's demons around this place, but there's angels winning. Give God praise. I, I, I've been working with a farrier for about a month and a half learning how to shoe horses. There's a horse psychic around. Me and old fellow I'm working for, he, he's cutting horses, and you know, I'm, clean, I'm cleaning the feet out for him and trimming, and there's this woman talking about, hey, hey and calls his name out and says, hey, have you heard about the horse psychic? He said, yeah, I heard about that. What's going on? She said, well, he, she came and talked to one of my horses and told me what was wrong with him and what they was thinking. Listen to this. I'm closing with this. Find a worship song. And, you, you know, and I get the whole horse whisper thing. But th this lady was, and it's pure, witchcraft works. Witchcraft works. Psychics do have power. God is supreme. Spells do work if you're not saved. If you're saved, they don't work on you. The blood of Jesus cancels every curse. The blood of Jesus cancels every curse. She said, yeah, uh, this woman talked to this horse and said he was afraid to pull that buggy over there. And I'm like, and this one's afraid that he's going to go to the dog food factory. That's what got me. That horse don't know about dog food. And I'm sitting there looking, you mean to tell me you paid them for that? And I'm sitting there, you know, laughing in my mind, thinking, man, I got a good mind to tell her. Wait a minute, I'm listening to something that horse is telling me. And then, and then I'm repenting, you know, because I'm playing in my mind, you know, and I'm, and I'm over there laughing. I'm, I, I'm, I start looking at it and say, wait a minute, I'm getting some vibes from that horse. He's telling me something right now. <laughs> and, and, and I get home and tell Teresa about the story. And, and I'm kind of hard-handed, you know, I am, man. My, my stuff minds. My dog's mine. My horse is mine. I will whip the fire out of them. There's a difference in a beating and a whipping. You know, I, I'm rough with my dogs. And Teresa's like, I, I can't believe they still come up to you after you, after you because I whip them, I don't beat them. When something gets whipped, when it knows it's in the wrong, it'll continue to love you. If you beat it, it won't. There's a difference. But I'm hard-handed. My stuff minds. You got 1,200-pound muscle, it's got a mind. You can't treat it like a cat. It's got to mind. You, you, you got an 80-pound pit bulldog, you see them little women, them dogs just running, he has got a mind. He has got to understand that with one bite, he could kill a child. If he's mine, he, he minds. Rod of correction drives foolishness far from the heart of a horse or a pit bull. So, so Teresa said, you better not let that psychic talk to your animals. <laughs> P Peter, I have you under the jail. <laughs> but that's just some, some, some humor on a serious message. But do not get tied up in, in, into psyche, psychics, mediums, because it's everywhere. And it's real. It's the way that the enemy can come in and get hooks in you. So Satan will appear. The Bible says Satan will appear as an angel of light. So now this horse psychic is going around saying it's talking to horses. And, and, and now the people's buying it. Satan will appear as an angel of light. He will appear to do small good acts for the greater damnation of your soul. Stand to your feet in the presence of God. The journey and the destination. I thank God for the destination, but it's the people along the journey that I'm, that, that I'm really appreciative for. I, I thank God that I'm going to heaven one day. But I got to live this journey in the morning. I thank God that my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But I still got to get up and go to work in the morning. And I got to have some peace tomorrow evening when I come home. So I need Jesus. Say, I need the Spirit. I need the Holy Ghost. How many of you need the Holy Ghost every day? Give you God some praise. Thank God for the journey. And, and please understand when to, how to say no. And the Bible said when 
resistance came, Paul left. Sometimes he stayed and debated and confronted, but this time, you, you got to discern when to pull your sword and when to turn the other cheek. Some of you is in places that you can't stand, and, and for good reason, and, and, and the resistance, is it, God's allowing it to push you into another job, push you into a career change, push you into starting your own business. You would have never done it if everything would have been going well. Some of you is at jobs, and people's turning on you, people's telling on you, lying on you, do it, call, pushing all your buttons. You would have stayed there and lived a mediocre life. But because you got a millionaire seed on the inside, God steps back and, and allows the stickers to hurt you so you jump out of the nest. Father, we love you. We These altars are open if you want to find yourself a place to pray, praise, and talk to God. God, I thank you for the journey. God, I thank you for the destination. God, we know where we're going when we die. God, we belong to you. But God, we need help on this journey. God, the people that we meet, the, the enemies that we confront, the people that the enemy dispatches that don't even like us, God. We need, we need help. God, we need your Holy Spirit. God, we, God as we read and understand now, there, 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 there's more just than salvation and water baptism. That helps us up to a point. But we need to be baptized with your Spirit, God. The Bible said when you baptize with the Spirit, you receive power from on high. God, baptize every man and woman in here with your spirit. God, I thank you for the evidence of speaking in tongues. God, I thank you for the gifts of the spirit, God, that's, that, that's distributed to the church goers, God, for the edification and the building up of the church. God, I ask you to bind every enemy against us. If there's anybody here lost and undone this morning that needs Jesus as a Savior, amen, if you'll come down, we I, I do know the sinner's prayer that I can recite with you. Or you can simply right where you are say, say, God, I believe that you, Lord. I ask you to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins. Help me live this life. God, help me quit the addictions, the compulsive disorders, hang-ups, God, hook-ups and hang-ups, God, all the stuff, God, that, that, that has the tendency, God, to distract or has the, the ability to destroy me, God, I ask you to help me overcome it, God. God, there's men and women in here, God, that are struggling with addictions. Some of them people don't even know they have, God. God, some things are still in the closet, but God, I ask you to help them overcome it, Lord. God, give us the ability, the love for you, and let it override the hang-up that we have. That, God, we can resist it. The Bible said when you resist the enemy, he will flee. There's some things you have to resist, you have to say no to. You cannot give flesh everything flesh wants every time flesh wants it. You have got to resist. And the church said amen. Raise your hands to heaven. If you're, right, if you're We're out of time, but I pray that you're excited about the word of God as we are. What an awesome word. I pray that that word give you the spiritual nourishment to take you through life's trials. I pray that that word will feed you throughout this week and God will continue to give you strength, peace, safety, and protection. Amen. If this ministry feeds you, feed it. So into what God's doing here that God can continue to further the kingdom. And so we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ at the four corners of this earth. We're so thankful and appreciative that you tune in and watch us. Continue to pray for us. If you're in the area, come have church with us. Amen. We'll be looking for you. Pastor Joy Castleberry, Lifeline Ministries. Have a good day.